So the Bayswater Level Crossing Removal Project, um, it involved removing two level crossings in the suburb of Bayswater. Bayswater is approximately 30 kilometres east of Melbourne CBD. Um, and with the reasons for removing level crossings is um, safety improvements, uh, congestion improvements on the road, um, and also you're setting the rail network up for additional rail, additional trains in the future without having any effect on the other modes of transport in the area. Um, within the project itself, we had the two new uh, road bridges uh, with the rail running underneath. We constructed a new station, a bus interchange within the station, a new station car park. Um, and there's also a large placemaking aspect to the Bayswater project in that we have um, improved the streetscape in the middle of the suburb. We've actually removed a lane in each direction on Mountain Highway. And we're after making the place a lot more friendly for pedestrians and cyclists and the people that live there. Um, the project itself was delivered as an alliance project. Um, it was delivered as an alliance because uh, there were just so many participants that had a hand in the project. Um, so we had various government departments involved, along with the private sector for the design construction and also the rail operator. Um, and together, all the participants share in the, uh, the risk and the reward of getting the project built. My own role on the project, so I uh, represented Vic Roads, the state road authority here in Victoria, and my role involved um, stakeholder design coordination, so feeding in from all the different stakeholders to getting an agreed design that everyone was happy with. But a large part of my role was also the sustainability aspect because I was the sustainability representative and champion on the alliance management team. So that went quite well with the design role. I think one of the real wins that Bayswater did achieve was how our org chart worked. Um, my own role being in stakeholder coordination for design, um, along with having that sustainability element, it meant that sustainability and the ISCA rating, um, it was able to form part of many conversations, both at a detailed design level, but then also at a higher level at the Alliance management team. So. First of all, obviously understanding what sustainability was and what were those sustainable outcomes that we wanted on the project and then ensuring that it was a topic in all the conversations where it needed to be. Um, so I worked very closely with the sustainability lead on the project and then together we were able to get some really good outcomes. Um, I think a second real win was the fact that um, sustainability was a nominated key result area on the project. So along with more typical key result areas such as cost and time sustainability was up there um, and it was discussed with the larger project team very often so everybody knew that it was it was an area of the project that we had to perform in um, it wasn't just something that sat over in a corner with um, one specialist um, and finally at the very beginning of the project um, eight senior officers and management on the project were went through the two days of this ISCA training so people were a lot more informed about what ISCA was, um, what it entails and how you go about actually delivering it. So we had people from commercial, stakeholder, design, construction, operations, quality. Quite a few of us went through the training. So there was somebody in a lot of different disciplines in the project who understand what ISCA is, why we're doing it and what we're trying to get out of it. Um, challenge wise, we were one of the first projects in Victoria to actually um, get an ISCA rating. So it was new to everyone. It was new to us leading it and it was also new to a lot of the people designing and building it. Um, there was just a, lear a lot of learning involved, a few mistakes made, um, but that is now being built on for future projects. So the North East Program Alliance, or NEPA as we call it, is the first of three program alliances that are being put in place to help deliver the um, 50 level crossings for the level crossing removal program. An alliance really is a great way of bringing together complementary skill sets from different businesses to deliver uh, complex infrastructure projects and programs of work. And in our alliance, we comprise of the Level Crossing Removal Authority, LXRA, Metro Trains Melbourne as the uh, interface with the operators, Lango Rock and Fulton Hogan, who were similarly teamed up on the Bayswater project, 
uh, and Jacobs as design partner. <clears throat> my role in the Alliance is Alliance General Manager, so it's my job to bring all of those businesses together to make one collegiate team and get everybody pulling in the same direction. Uh, and we'll be delivering a substantial amount of work over what is a five-year framework. Our initial work packages are on the Hurstbridge line, um, and our subsequent packages could be anywhere, um, but are predominantly around the uh, South Morang line. And we're currently in the process of completing our planning and, and construction stage and mobilising out to site. So the Alliance absolutely recognises the successes of Bayswater and we're really foolish to, to reinvent the world with that. So we've got every intention on building on those successes and we've got a massive opportunity to do that on what is a number of Bayswater sized projects. Um, so we, we're looking to get a, a similar result or better. In fact, the bar's been raised and we're looking to raise it again on here. I guess our challenge is with, with the scale of the programme that we're looking at is that we'll be bringing in lots of new people into the organisation and the partner businesses. Uh, and um, you know, we really are going to have to work hard to, to get them to understand um, why it's important to us and really the part they play. I guess there's two ways of getting success um, with any initiative. You can either bulldoze your way through it uh, and make people um, toe the line, or, or you really can get people to believe it's important. You know, and, and, and then that was the route that Bayswater took. It was a very important part of the success um, and the, the rating that we got out of Bayswater was everybody believed in what they were doing and everybody knew what they were contributing towards that result. Um, we, we were really careful to make sure that we included sustainability um, professionals, experts at very early stage of the project. Um, and our thinking in design, procurement, construction program have all, all been heavily influenced already so that we, we're starting off in the best possible way that we can. Um, we're firm believers that you can only measure what you can manage. You can only measure what, manage what you can measure, I'm sorry. And, um, you know, to do that, we've put in some really um, key metrics and key result areas, key performance indicators um, for sustainability, social procurement, innovation, uh, all which will play into our overall sustainability result. Additionally, we've taken the further step of voluntarily uh, signing up to uh, Victoria's Take Two Climate Challenge initiative and uh, we're working really hard with local and state governments then to uh, look at the priority initiatives and how we can work them into our project for, uh, for an overall result. I think one of the key initiatives that we have for sustainability was our overall approach for sustainability. Rather than just focusing on the absolute minimum to get contract conditions or to meet sustainability targets, we really took a deeper focus on all elements of the rating tools and we really created a broader piece for sustainability. It's what we call our ethical approach for sustainability. And by doing that, we actually came away with a broader sustainability result and the performance results followed. Some of the other initiatives that we have for the project is based around our design and engineering team working extremely hard to implement initiatives and innovations in the design and delivery space. Some of the initiatives that I can talk you through today is the dewatering centrifuge unit, um, the, the surface water and rainwater harvesting tanks, LED lighting site-wide, uh, subsurface drip irrigation, native and drought tolerant plants. We even selected high performing sustainability materials such as asphalt with 30% um, recycled asphalt um, and also concrete with 36% supplementary cementitious materials. So with these initiatives and the many others that we were able to implement on the ground, it created a combination of getting really good results for sustainability. Take the time at the very front end of the job to identify your challenges. If you can identify your challenges, you can set up the appropriate obje objectives to resolve those challenges and you've really set yourself up a roadmap for success. Once you've set that roadmap, you could just basically need to get the team to follow that path and the performing results should follow, followed by the rating results. Secondly, is a tip to make sustainability easy to do for others. Currently, sustainability sits in a world for technical specialists or specialists alike. What we did at Bayswater was we made it easy to do for others to implement on the ground. Everyone in a range of different teams from commercial um, to construction to design to engineering to operational systems, they all had an understanding of what they needed to do under the rating tools and how to interpret the requirements under the rating tools. By having that understanding, everyone created a sense of ownership on what they needed to do on the ground 
and it actually ga gave way to um, delivering a lot of really high sustainability performing outcomes. Another tip which I grabbed from an Andrew Ackerman's speech, who is our Alliance General Manager at Bayswater, um, is panic early and don't panic late. Now whilst this message was targeted for other reasons, it really sells home for sustainability. I think sustainability professionals and the whole team should just really invest in sustainability at the very front end of the job. Take the time to invest very, very early in the bid development phase, then follow into the design, then into your engineering, procurement and construction methodology. If you do this in this order, the, rating, the performance outcomes should show at the end of the job and the rating results will follow. My last one, and I'm a firm believer in this tip, is to make sustainability attractive, sell it, give it a brand. Sustainability is very much a culture piece, just like many of the other functions in a project. And if you can create that positive culture for sustainability by giving it a brand, selling it, promoting it, doing anything that you need to do to make attraction for sustainability, it creates that engagement piece with the whole team and also the client. At the end of the job, everyone in the project team should have a clear understanding of why they're doing sustainability, how to do it, and why they should do it for the next job. If you can do that, the client have already got an engagement for it and all the other key stakers involved for the project.